excited to welcome you back to our mini series, day three, our final day. Yesterday, you learned all about diet and what you could be missing, what we regularly see is missing with our one to one couples coaching program participants. And then also on the first day, we were talking about fertility treatment myths, what's been missed, and what testing that we recommend to really get to the bottom of why it's not working in the first place. So today we're talking about self care and really how to put yourself first. And we regularly see women getting triggered with a lot of, um, there's a lot of triggers on the fertility journey, as well as uh, infertility impacts all aspects of your life. So we're going to talk about some strategies today on how you can actually begin to mother yourself before your baby comes. So excited for you to listen to today's episode and feel free to leave a review on iTunes. Put yourself first and your emotions first and protect yourself so that you are in the right headspace to go along this um, infertility journey. Um, And by doing that, you're going to set yourself up and allowing your body to do the things that it needs to do to begin the healing process. Welcome to Get Pregnant Naturally, where functional medicine and natural fertility solutions will help you get pregnant and have your baby. Excited for day three of our mini series and we're welcoming back Brandy Buscow to the podcast. Today we're digging into self-care and how to really finally put yourself first. We see this over and over again. It is very difficult to prioritize self-care. So we're going to be giving you some tips on this. Definitely check out my story with infertility. And you can see that on episode Get Pregnant Naturally with a low MH and POF. So I'm the founder of Fat Fertile, your host here of the Get Pregnant Naturally podcast and fertility coach. And Brandy is part of my team here at Fat Fertile. She's an integral part of our couples coaching program, which uses functional lab testing, diet, and lifestyle changes to dramatically improve conception. So if you are struggling with infertility, your body is desperately trying to tell you something. Focusing on your health will either help you get pregnant naturally, or if you do need to go to the fertility clinic, you'll improve your chances of success. So Brandy's a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner, certified transformational health coach, and EFT practitioner. And before we jump into today's show, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on iTunes or wherever you're listening to this to make sure you never miss an episode. Hey, Brand, excited to have you back on. Thank you. Excited to be back. Awesome. So we are, today we're going to be digging into what you're going to learn is why sleep matters for fertility. Why spending hours researching infertility and feeling exhausted? Um, why that obviously is not a good idea. We're going to dig into, we see this quite commonly, so we're going to dig into some some tips to help you right now. Uh, Getting honest about your triggers, obviously um, going through infertility that impacts all aspects of your life. So we're going to talk about pregnancy announcements and baby showers and what to do. And then setting boundaries, how to really prioritize your self-care. This is something that we we all know we, we should do, but we can't seem to get it into our routine. So, So with that, we're going to talk about, the first thing we're going to talk about is sleep. So this is something that we work on with our clients for months, sleep hygiene. And really a, a, a small step to take for, for this right now is to take your phone out of the bedroom. And if you're like, I can't take my phone out of my bedroom, it's, you know, I need it. Well, maybe you need to examine why why that's the case. Because a lot of times we're, it's the first thing that we look at in the morning, the last thing we look at before we go to bed. So you can, if you need it as the alarm, you can certainly put it on flight mode, or maybe you can go get a old school alarm clock and, and charge your phone outside of your room. And then also the aim for you is to get into bed before 1030. Now, if you're currently going to bed around midnight, you want to then try to back that up a half an hour. So so to not say if you're right now at midnight, try to get into bed by 1030, that might be unrealistic for you. So if you're currently at, at midnight, back it to 1130, and then the next week go down to 11. So just do, just do this very gradually. So sleep, sleep is so important for fertility and for hormones. Did you want to add anything there, Randy? Yeah, the quality of sleep is important too. So if you're going to bed at 1030 and you're in bed, but you're not falling asleep until one and then you toss and turn and then you fall asleep and then you get up and go to the bathroom. By the time you wake up the next morning, you just feel like you didn't sleep. That's not ideal either. So we we work on all of the different aspects of sleep so that you have a really good bedtime routine and that you are getting quality sleep. And the reason that that's important is because that's the foundation that's going to help you be able to have the motivation to make the other changes that you need to make. So having a good night of sleep is going to help you to make good food choices. Because if you're sleep deprived, um, somebody who's sleep deprived is already waking up and they're already a little bit insulin resistant and they're going to have food cravings and they're 
willpower is not going to be there to make the right food choices. It's also going to impact their mood and their energy throughout the day. So they might say, well, I don't feel like meditating. I don't feel like going to the gym, you know? So that's why sleep is really foundational because it's, it's such a big foundational piece that if you can get your sleep right, you're going to feel good every day or most days to have the motivation to do the other things that are important for your health and, and make you feel good. Yeah. So our, our top tips on this are to take the phone out of your out of your bedroom, aim to get in, get into to bed by 1030 or at least back down your current your current time by half an hour. And also you can do this sleep ritual to make sure it's a nice cool room and to do use the blackout curtains. And if you have a little sleep mask, I just got a sleep mask this year. I can't believe in all my years of living, I've never had a sleep mask. And the sleep mask is like awesome. It just, I don't know, I feel like I'm in a little cocoon. It's very uh, comforting and I didn't really have any issues with my sleep, but this just seems to make me sleep even better. So, and also I also put essential oils um, on before I go to bed. I just find that really calming. So um, those, you know, make it a, make it a transition. So, you know, change into pajamas. Don't just keep the clothes on that you were wearing before and hop into bed. Make it a transition. So this ritual as you get into bed and and really as that include that as part of, part of your self-care routine. So self-care, as we we've talked about before, it's not just about many, many petties and massages. It's the, these are the foundational pieces that really are helping you to be able to do all the other things in your life is and sleep is number one. And then, so the next one we have is the uh, research. So we're seeing, we see a lot of people that are spending hours researching, uh, researching infertility. They go down the complete rabbit hole of looking up information and we get it. There's a lot of information out there. It can be contradictory and confusing. And so, so first of all, well, first of all, we recommend to stop researching. And if that's too much for you, you're, you're at, you know, two hours a day of researching because you may know you're not, you may not even be aware that you're actually doing that. So first to be aware that you're doing that. So if you're at two hours for us to say you to go down to none would probably be too much. So if that's you, otherwise, if you're going to do this, set a, set a timer, set a timer to 10 minutes or so to say, okay, when I'm looking up, up something, you know, all for the love of learning, but if it sends you down a rabbit hole of you comparing, you know, someone, something that worked for someone, will it work for me? And I'm not sure. And second guessing what you're, you're doing. So it can be very stressful for people. So when you come out of there, you don't necessarily feel better. You feel you typically more overwhelmed. Anything you wanted to add, Bernie? Yeah. The research part, I think is also really important because there's so much information on the internet. And so if you're out there researching, the tendency is going to be, I want to try all the things. And then when you come to work with, um, you know, somebody like us, and you're doing 10 different things that that the internet tells you is going to help you with your fertility, you have no idea whether or not it's working for you. And it can sometimes make you feel really overwhelmed and impatient and not want to take a step back and follow the approach that we recommend. Because you're thinking you need to do all these other things because people told you that that's going to improve your fertility when the reality is, is that they may not be working for you. So just keeping that in mind, keeping an open mind, it's good to be informed. It's good to have information because you want to be an empowered patient when you go to your doctor, but you also don't want to overwhelm yourself with so much information that you're trying to do 10 different things all at once because it's just not going to work. Yeah. you. So if we're if you're researching something that, again, that may have been right for someone else, but is it right for you? And then it, you may be avoiding doing you know th- those foundational changes. Maybe you're looking at doing something that you've read somewhere that's, you know, superfood or something that's going to be helpful, but you've forgotten to actually like dig into the sleep piece. Or if we've found out that, that, you know, you're extremely gluten sensitive, you haven't committed to being gluten free. So although, as I say, I love the I love of learning, but is it, is it helpful for you and to, to really stop and, and see how, how many time, how many hours you're spending doing this? And the next one we have are triggers. So on the uh, fertility journey, there are triggers everywhere. It's completely normal to feel jealous, envious, angry, frustrated, sad, lonely. Uh, all of those feelings are completely normal. And and um, it's it's important to ask for support, and that's why we we have our couples coaching program, which really helps helps for you and your partner to get on the same page. Because sometimes this can either pull this journey can pull you apart or bring you or bring you back together. So and, and so in this with the trigger side of things, to be able to tell your friends and family exactly what it what it is you need, how you want them to handle announcements. Obviously, you can't be you know telling everyone how you want them to handle announcements, but for your your close friends and family, if some of them are 
are are trying to get pregnant, how how you want them to handle the baby shower announcements and invites. And maybe you decide you don't go to all of them, but if it's your best friend or your sister or or you know a close friend, you you say I can come, but I can only come for a short period of time. So it's really it's empowering to be able to speak up to say what it is you need. And sometimes we haven't even thought about what we need. We just, when someone, these things come at us and we feel triggered and then we go down a rabbit hole and we've, you know, lost uh, days, months and years and we're feeling very, very like low in this position. So it is to, to be aware that these are all normal feelings, but to be able to give voice to them to with a person that you trust. Yeah. And um, I think this is, you know, just from the emotional mental side of things um, and with my EFT background, this is really, really important for a lot of women. Um, it's something that is very triggering and can set up subconscious blocks when it comes to your infertility. And this is where we're going to talk about things, uh, the importance of putting yourself first, the importance of saying no, the importance of setting boundaries. Um, it, it can be something that feels really uncomfortable and difficult to do, but it's, it's also really important um, because you need to put yourself first and your emotions first and protect yourself so that you are in the right headspace to go along this um, infertility journey. Um, And by doing that, you're going to set yourself up for having more positivity and being open to all of the possibilities and allowing your body to do the things that it needs to do to begin the healing process. Yeah, because the the functional testing obviously is is essential to to give us that 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 uh, foundational plan to help you and the diet changes are important. But the mental emotional side of this is equally important. So infertility will, will impact all aspects of your life from your career to your relationships to your joy to your creativity, it impacts all aspects of your life. And to re- really be, be aware of that, they, they liken an infertility diagnosis to, to cancer. So it's extremely stressful. And now not everyone may, um, uh, may, may feel stressed by this. So either you could potentially be feeling really stressed by this and really overwhelmed, or maybe you're like, I'm fine. I don't feel stressed at all. And that was me. I was like, I don't, I don't feel stressed. I'm good. I've got this. But I didn't have this. I didn't ask. I didn't reach out for support. I, I thought I was okay until I wasn't. So it is being able to, you know, talk about these emotions and be able to get this stuff out. And even though you may be, you know, excited about a lot of things like myself and being able to say, you know, want to say yes to a lot of things, you know, is that right for you? And, and is it right for your, of how you're feeling right now and what, and what you need? So being able to set some boundaries and being able to say no, even when you, you know, you want to say yes, it could be a fun party you want, you want to attend, but really, you know, how will you feel if you go? Is it, you know, if you had a long day at work and you want to get into bed early and you know, so it's just really, a lot of this is just tuning into your body and what you need and looking at your patterns. We see this a lot. And, you know, in times of stress, what, what do you do? Do you like to pile things on yourself, you know, or like whatever your pattern may, uh, may be, and it'll keep coming up. And maybe a lot of the times we're an automatic pilot. We don't even see that it's been going on. So to recognize that to start with, and to know that you know where you are right now, it, it can be either you're feeling super stressed or not stressed at all, and and just even recognize that and say, wait a minute, I think I need to 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 stop pushing it down to let it out. Yeah, absolutely. I think another important aspect for us to talk about, and I think um, is something that's good that we work on with mental emotional stressors. I mean, it's it's such a huge it's a huge topic, and it's mm-hmm. it's really hard to go over all the details, but. We can't escape the fact that we live in a very busy world. We are all stressed out. We all have deadlines. We can't just get rid of our job and get rid of our spouse and, you know, get rid of all the things that stress us out. But we can train our bodies to perceive stress differently. And so that that's practice. Um, and that's where, you know, things like journaling and setting boundaries and meditation can really help you to change the way your body perceives stress so that you can actually feel more calm and confident. So that's another aspect that we, we tend to work on, um, with clients is, is changing their perception of stress because you can't eliminate it. Absolutely. So, and for you, if it's adding in journaling, if you like to write, or if you don't like to write, you can put it, you know, you can speak into your, your phone, put it on voice record and picking some sort of evening, either doing some breathing or meditation throughout the day. Um, typically it's best to do that in the morning, some meditation and commit to, so we have people will commit to starting at five minutes per day. So can you find five minutes in the day where you're where you're quiet 
And this took me years to actually do. I was very inconsistent with it. And so now I've sort of set up a place in my bedroom, what's sort of a sacred place where, where I have a little blanket and I have, I put some essential oils on. I, I got a little eye pillow and I'll, I'll listen to some, I'm right now I'm on uh, singing bowls, Tibetan singing bowls. I just love those. And I put a timer on for about either when anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes and sit quietly. Or for me, I, I, I lie down. So it is take that time to get quiet every day. And I really for, I'm like, I don't have time for that. I'm too busy. And those are the, those are the kind of people actually that need it even more. I know for me, this one, if, if I feel kind of anxious or not grounded, the, the meditation just gives me this sense of calm. And we just finished our mindfulness fertility series, which we run a couple of times a year. We challenge um, participants in that to, to, to meditate. And just the, over the six weeks, people just committing to doing some meditation, those small, steps, they come in extremely stressed, worried, anxious. And by the end of it, they're just, it's just a, just to see it on their face. They're, they're just calm. You know, they're, they're ready to, instead of responding or instead of reacting, they're able to respond to um, situations. And so it can just be such a, such a, a calming thing. And if meditation is not right for you, you can do uh, walking meditation as well. So just to find something where you can get quiet. Is there anything that you like there, Brandy? Yeah, I mean, there's so many different things that you can do. I mean, that's a really good practice um, that that you have. And I think it's something that we also need to talk about is being realistic with yourself. Um, you kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier in the podcast of like, it's not about the bubble baths and massage and all of those things because you guys are on... Uh, your fertility journey and the goal is having kids. And so you need to start implementing practices that help you feel refreshed that are practical and that you can do and that are doable. Because when kids come, you're not going to have the time to do all of these elaborate self-care routines. So if it's taking some time to have meditation, taking some time to journal, even if it's, you know, like, to be honest, there's some people who just say, you know what, I'm giving myself permission for 20 minutes a day where I can just sit and go on social media. If that's your thing, that's fine. Um, it's just not going overboard and sitting for half the day on there where it's making you feel terrible. Finding the things that that make you feel empowered, that kind of fill your cup up, that make you feel good, that are realistic and things that you can implement in your life day to day that doesn't take a lot of time. Yeah. And if you're feeling super triggered on social media, then maybe you even wanted to say, you know what, I'm just going to take that app off my phone. I'm going to take off Instagram, take off Facebook. Now we got TikTok, take that off and um, see how you'd feel without scrolling down, seeing baby pictures and, mm -hmm. you know, potential announcements and, and going down that that real is a rabbit hole and also that comparison game oh look at her look at that look what they have and that we talk about this in, in, in the mindfulness group where it's perspective so being able to zoom out and sometimes we're just like stuck right in the minutia of it all zooming out you don't know what's going on in their life and the stresses that they have and what's happening and we get caught up in our own in the struggle and we talk about the struggle having a beginning middle and end and maybe you're in the miss the messy middle right now but mm -hmm. it is as I say important important to, to give voice to those thoughts. Saying you're committed to having a baby and actually committing are two different things. So right now it's time to take action. And we talked about today. So prioritizing self-care is essential. And we've talked about this before as well. So it's time to mother yourself uh, right now as you prepare for a baby. And I really like that analogy. That's from Elizabeth Manning. She was on the podcast talking about really taking the time now to mother yourself. And uh, so if you're ready to take a targeted, customized, functional approach to your fertility, you can book a call by going to Fab Fertile fabfertile.com and clicking on free call. And this calls for you and your partner. So space is very limited and we're, we have two spots available each month to work with you. So if the functional approach feels right for you, go on over to fabfertile.com. So fabfertile.com and click on free call. And thanks again, Brandy, for joining me in this mini series. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Functional Fertility mini series over the last three days. And you've received some bite-sized action steps that you can implement right now. However, if you're still feeling unsure of your next steps and the functional approach feels right for you, I encourage you to book a free call by going to fabfertile.com, that's fabfertile.com, and click on book a free call. January is right around the corner and as we enter into the holiday season, you may be receiving some well-meaning advice from friends and family. And I want you to be able to say, thank you very much, but I've already got my solution from a fertility expert. 
Until next time, take care. The Get Pregnant Naturally podcast, including show notes and links, provides information with respect to healthy living, nutrition, lab testing, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Get Pregnant Naturally podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without representation or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified health care provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program.